Hi, welcome to this video day. We're on the 6th of August, we're on Saturday. Now in today's video, I want to give our updated outlook for the USD. Now in terms of the dollar, we've been heavily bullish this year in all our videos and the USD has gone nicely higher. There's still far more strength to come. Now one of the best ways to trade the currency markets is basically to look at the really big fundamentals that drive big long-term trends and then just use simple technicals to manage your trades. Now a lot of traders or the majority of beginners in particular uh, just prefer a purely technical approach. You will not catch and hold big trends just trading technicals. You need to measure how far a trend might go. That comes from the fundamentals and the sentiment towards them. Now in terms of doing this it is actually a lot easier than most traders think. So I'm just going to go through some tips in relation to this way of trading in this video. Now a group of currencies that are particularly vulnerable against the USD in our view going forward are the commodity currencies. So I want to focus on uh, the following pairs AUD USD, USD CAD, NZD USD and finally USD ZAR. We'll go over to the charts in just a moment. Now before we go to the charts just always please do keep in mind that it's my view as of this current moment in time. It can of course change in line with market action and conditions. If you want to learn our trading strategies, all our techniques and check out our daily sentiment and technical analysis of 14 FX pairs, just go to the link that's beneath this video and get life access to our member center. You can also follow us on our Facebook page and join our Facebook group of traders. Right, let's go and take a look at the trade setups. First chart we're on is USD CAD. It's a monthly chart. I'm just using this chart to show the big picture and to show where our target is, which we can't see on the daily chart. We'll go to the daily chart a little bit later and look at uh, yeah potential levels of entry, stop and target if you wanted to be long, of course, of the USD. Now, in terms of the USD, after that sharp fall there, we did work our way up in 2000. 22 we've come up from the 125 level to below the 130 level we now think the usd will break higher to 135 so 500 more pips the upside and maybe even 140 now in terms of making those projections like i said in the intro you cannot do it from the technicals you need to know the big fundamentals behind the chart so i want to look at some general charts in relation to why we're so bullish of the USD, bearish of the commodity currencies, then we'll do our levels of entry, stop and target. I want to go to my first chart, which is, I'm sure many people are familiar with this, it's just a general chart, it's the dollar smile. When does the dollar do really well? Uh, when the US outperforms the rest of the world, or when you have a US recession or synchronized global slowdown. Now there is the possibility of a US recession coming. Uh, but we've certainly got a synchronized global slowdown. The global economy is slowing up fast and could face recession. So that's going to underpin the USD going forward. Now, in terms of the dollar, this is the dollar index, uh, includes the commodity currency, just general chart of dollar strength and weakness. And if you look at 2022, it really has moved sharply higher. This is mostly to do with the Fed being hawkish and raising interest rates. Now you're going to get um, the fears of a global recession come into play and push the USD higher. Now in terms of the market, the market has kind of decided the Fed may not raise interest rates aggressively going forward because that could cause a recession, but the Fed have to raise interest rates. And this is a great chart. It's rare. Um, US inflation above Mexico. OK, inflation is really strong. We're going to have CPI out in the coming week. That is going to come in hot again. OK, the Fed need to tame inflation. But the market thinks they're going to move a little bit gently. I'll show you this chart here. Um, this is how they've parred back their view of how far interest rates may go. This is the market pricing. 
Back in mid-June, they saw the rate peaking above 4%. By the 27th of June, that had declined to 3.6% and now about 3.4%. Now, in terms of the Fed, they've said they want to see a good few months of inflation coming down sharply, okay, before they're going to take a dovish view or that become more dovish. Now, in our view, we should get to above 4%. And we don't agree that, yeah, we're going to start in the first quarter um, cutting rates, which is the market consensus. We think they'll have to hike into the new year probably. Okay, so US rates being powered back a little bit. Uh, we think the market will change its view. Okay, now in terms of of next charts, uh, just a few commodities. Now, we know that if the US economy slows, uh, not US economy, the global economy slows, then obviously commodities come down. This is crude oil, which has been a huge bull market. You know, during COVID, look at it, it was just roaring to the upside. Um, no one was traveling anywhere, were they? Uh, there wasn't much crude oil being used. Why did crude rise in that environment. 90% of crude volatility is speculative. You removed speculators from crude oil, it wouldn't move much at all. Push-up in COVID was driven by Fed stimulus. Fed stimulus drove the stock market higher and crude is bought as a proxy to stock market strength. You then got follow-on to the upside based upon the Russia-Ukraine conflict. That's now discounted. Um, so we think that crude oil, it's rolled over below the 100 level to get back to anywhere near fair value needs to get a 60, then to 40. That will particularly weigh on the CAD if we fall lower. Obviously, Australia exports crude and so does South Africa as well, but CAD is the main one impacted by crude oil. And here is an interesting chart. It's US gasoline. This is um, the average before COVID hit. Okay, of gasoline usage, pretty firm. Look at it here. <laughs> you know, there's no demand. Okay, same with jet fuel. Okay, going down. Look at it in 2019, where it was. Look at where it is now. Um, next chart. This is a good chart because um, this is crude oil demand uh, from China. Now, in terms of China, it's the world's biggest commodity consumer and its economy is in big trouble and you're seeing crude go down. We've all seen the COVID lockdowns in China impacted on the growth, um, but also they've got a massive problem with real estate. I uh, can't cover it in this video, but if the real estate bubble bursts, and it's looking like it might, um, the demand for commodities will drop dramatically, you know, such as um, iron ore, for example, which is uh, the main commodity export of Australia. Uh, where else can we go? I should have some more charts on crude. We don't need any more on that. I'll just go to copper. Uh, copper is known as Dr. Copper. In terms of it gives clues to the health of the global economy, just due to its wide usage in a lot of industries. Look at the fall in copper. Copper, we think, will go to 2750, then back to 2000. So the outlook for commodities um, is not rosy at all. And lower commodity prices will weigh on the commodity currencies. Right, let's go back and look at the trade setups, USD CAD first. CAD daily chart in terms of this exhaustion here and correction, that's on the market's view that the Fed will not raise interest rates aggressively. We get below 128 push on a bit to the downside, get back above the level, then we find support on three bodies and we're just trading away from first level support. So about 60 pips for us so far, so not much, but we're hoping for a lot more. Uh, I just personally think this is a buy. You could buy off support on strength or just basically buy through the 130 level. We should go to 131, then 135, which is about here, the risk to reward is really good, just to 135, but I said we could actually run on 
to 140. So we'll see what happens with this one. Uh, AUD USD. Let's find it. Where are we? Okay, here's the AUD. Uh, big trend is down, come down, rally, down. You get a rally. You come up to try and take out the 70 level. You do manage to do it on this blue here, but then that big red slaps back through the level. Tried to get up there. Red. I think that's a sell. Now, in terms of on the downside, you can see my targets. You can actually go and look at the monthly chart yourself. Uh, 65 and then 60. So potentially uh, 900 pips in this pair. Now, what we're going to do is look at the last two pairs, uh, NZD, USD and USD, czar. Right, so we're on NZD, USD. We had a nice fall there. Bit of a correction. Then another full, then we move up, correct oversold effectively. We get above 63, okay, but we can't hold. The red immediately comes back through the level. Then we come up to test 63 again, brief tail through, red rejection and down. I think now the rally is exhausted, it was just short covering, and we're going to go to the downside. If you wanted to play this one, you could sell a rally back to 63, look to come off the level of weakness. Stop 63.70 behind second level. Uh, or if we don't rally and we go through 62, just pop your stop behind 63. You can see the levels I'm looking for. 60, I think that should get hit. And then we should just run on to 55. So potentially, yeah, 700 plus pips on the downside. Um, last pair, uh, USD czar. Now, in terms of the czar, not only is it a commodity currency, it's also an emerging market currency. It relies heavily on dollar funding. Now, in terms of dollar funding, it goes down as we have a global slow up. The emerging markets you know, tend to get hit the hardest. This is a fast moving, volatile pair. We had a nice trade here and took it to the upside in just um, it was about six weeks or less. Actually, we did 7% on the upside okay so it's fast moving and volatile you don't need a big position when you're trading this pair we then top out come back find support here on the uh, 1650 level the big blue push off then we retreat blue on um friday you've got double bottom here i didn't draw in the level of support but it's there uh how would you play this one you could buy a dip or buy a breakout above this level here. If you buy a breakout, you can put your stop behind these two bodies. I presently got it back behind 1650. So I'd bring it up if we broke out. Upside potential again, uh, you can go and look at the monthly chart. Uh, if you wish, you'll see resistance 1850, then 19. So 1850 is, where is it? About up here, isn't it? Then 19 is at the top of my computer screen. So it's very little risk against the reward. Obviously, our view has got to come to fruition, but we like the look of all of these trades. Um, and yeah, we'll see what happens. But uh, yeah, a very bullish of the USD. We shall see. Right, that is the video for now. Hope you found it useful. Take care. Have a good day.